this is the G E M dash eight zero two zero A. Hello, 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 hello. Test. This is the General Electric M eight zero two zero A rim drive six transistor reel to reel tape recorder. It has variable speed control and believe it or not is servo controlled. Meaning that there is a transistor speed regulator circuit used for the motor. Another transistor in the circuitry is used to drive a transformer to step the uh, to step the audio signal up to high voltage to drive the neon light recording level indicator during recording. And then there's a four transistor amplifier for the recorder. It is DC bias, and this recorder is from 1967. When getting towards uh, the end, or even maybe in the middle of the tape, the speed gets somewhere around 7.5 inches per second. For audio quality, that's good, but for recording time, that's pretty bad. Especially on a 3.5 inch reel. It is manual control and the level is now set up all the way, so you're going to hear overdriving. I'm speaking of arms like systems as well now. It's picking up closer with the level set lower. Now I can set the level. If I have, a, if I have any online fluctuating a lot while I speak, it will probably sound distorted. I think the level has to be set to where the loudest portions, it barely lights up the neon light. And anyway, um, it has a hardwired microphone, but I did add an external microphone jack. You can see I installed right there the external microphone jack. So now we'll be hearing how it sounds with a different microphone. Okay, we're now using the Sony F96 microphone. And you may hear the sound quality is quite improved. A lot more bass, a lot cleaner sound, and probably less uh, static. Um, from the motor picked up when using the built-in microphone. At least it seems to happen. It might still have some of that static, but it should have better sound quality now. And now we're going to try the levels all the way up again. And I'm speaking at arm's length distance. And then if I speak up close to the level, I'll have the level driven. I'll have to turn the level down again. Using the Sony F96 microphone, we'll compare it again with the original GE microphone. This is the Sony microphone, and this again is the original GE hardwired microphone. Unfortunately, the cover that keeps the microphone in the compartment is gone. Luckily, though, the battery cover is still present. And now, in this recording, we're going to run it. We're running the recorder at the slowest speed now. See how it sounds. It was running at the slowest speed, slowest speed. Now we're running the recorder at the fastest speed in regular mode. Now let's want to put the speed back to the middle position. Now this recorder also boasts a fast forward. And the interesting thing is the fast forward can be operated also during record. So it could run the machine extra fast, probably up running close to 15 inches per second, at least towards the end of the tape. We're going to run it now and fast forward and record. I'm now in fast forward mode while making a recording to see how it sounds. This is actually one of the better sounding of the rim drive recorders. We're now using the Sony microphone again, running it at, well, probably around 15 inches per second, which is pretty crazy for a three and a half inch reel of recording time. Obviously, at a speed like this is extremely, extremely short. Anyway, let's see how this sounds. If 
approximately 15 inches per second. And I can also turn the level up and speak at the microphone more of a distance so it's not so close to my mouth. I know it's been a long time since I've uploaded a video to YouTube. My computer broke down during the weekend. There was a thunderstorm and I'm thinking it fried the motherboard or something. Now the computer fails to turn on. I'm currently using my laptop, but with the laptop I have no capture card and I also don't have a firewire um, hookup, so yeah. Okay, this is how it rewinds. It's not the fastest rewind in the world, but it isn't as, as bad as as slow as on some recorders. So I got this recorder in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and um, I had to replace, I think, three leaky capacitors. Um, when I got it, um, the amplifier would run, but it was a uh, had. You could hear static from the speaker when you turned the volume up, but the signal from the head was way too weak to even be played back at all. And when in record mode, you had to have the level all the way up and speak right up to the microphone to get the neon line to even fluctuate. Using my ESR meter, I was able to check the and find the bad capacitors quickly and replace them. And after replacing the capacitors, the amplifier is now loud and strong and pick and can pick up nice and well during record. Hello, 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 hello. Test. So I'm going to show recording now. You can see I put it in record mode. You see the neon light is fluctuating, but when it's fluctuating, that means it's overdriving. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. Uh, test, 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 test. Okay, this might be all right. Well, maybe not that good. It still needs to be a little bit lower. But what I'm going to show is the switch. When the switch is turned off, it turns off the entire machine, motor, and amplifier. But the switch is only active in record mode. In playback, in playback mode, the switch does not affect anything, which is an interesting design. I've never seen it like that before. Anyway, let's see how this sounds. see I put it in record mode. You see the neon light is fluctuating, but when it's fluctuating, that means it's overdriving. Um, <coughs> so I'm trying to turn the volume down a little bit. Test, uh, test, 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 test. Okay, this might be all right. Well, maybe not that good. It still needs to be a little bit low. So, pretty interesting to see. I'm go now I'm going to um, show how it looks with reels taken off. My clock's blinking. This is what the unit looks like with the reels off. You can see the simple rim drive pivoting motor. Rewind. And play slash record. I also had to clean and lubricate in where these are and also clean to the edge of the take-up um, rim and the motor shaft. At one point it had ridiculous flutter which there was flakes of rubber on part of the shaft and it was the diameter was changing ever so slightly as it turned and it gave a very annoying fast flutter. In this singing recording, recorded live, you can hear what the fast flutter sounded like when that problem was there. Testing, 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 testing. We're the place of therapy here. Anyway, now I recorded some music on this recorder directly um, from another cassette which was recorded off the radio, believe it or not but a program that plays much cooler music than what you typically hear on the radio. So, I don't know the name of the song. But, the song is amazing, and I'll, I'll show this machine's music recording quality with that song.
Okay. Anyway, yeah. So, now I may have had the level a little bit high when I recorded that, so it didn't come out perhaps as good as it could have been, but still, here an example of what it sounded like. Now, that song I had recorded um, back in 2010 on cassette, and I actually had recorded it on the night of March the 5th, 2010. I had the cassette labeled with the date. Here's what the back of the machine looks like. There's a little handle on there. And there is the battery compartment. Now, as far as I know, this machine is made in the U.S. Not, not all the internal components are made in the U.S. The motor is a Japanese unit, I think. Um, probably a lot of the components are Japanese, but as far as I know, the actual machine is manufactured in the U.S. And, it do, and, and nowhere on the actual casing does it say Japan. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video of this classic General Electric rim drive reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from 1967.